All right, so the 3D Warp tool in Avid, you find it in Blend, in your effect palette, in your filters, and in the 3D Warp tool. I already have an effect. Uh, I think it's like a flickery type of uh, maybe a film look on this shot right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it. I'm going to hold Alt when I drag it onto this clip, and now I have the 3D Warp effect on this clip. Obviously, there's a million different parameters you can change with the 3D Warp tool, but I'm, I'm just going to talk about position in today's one. And so the first thing I would do is set a keyframe in the beginning and a keyframe at the end. The keyframe is the key right next to enter or this little button right here if you want to. And what you want to do here is think about what you're adjusting, right? And in this case, I would be adjusting my Z position. Imagine I wanted to do a push into her face for some reason, reality type shot, reality type television. So what I'm gonna do is use this tool right here called the X Z position. This will move the Z position. And if you hold shift and you drag in this triangle right here, and then you can drag somewhere else and and then I switch to this X, Y position and I drag the clip where I want to go. This sh clip should, when I play it down, zoom in on her face. So one thing to think about when you're doing this type of thing, the Z position, X moves left, right. Y moves the clip up and down and Z moves it in what's called Z space, closer or farther away to the screen in a sense. Um, this is better to me than using scaling and adjusting position at the same time. You, you want to use the Z position in Avid using this tool, even for the most part, unless you want to do it um, you know, by specific numbers, but using this tool to make things, dragging up to make it smaller and dragging down to make it bigger. And again, now I have a very quick zoomed in right to her face. So with these keyframes, just to talk about them a little quick, if I were to alt drag this keyframe much closer, now this effect will happen much quicker, right? And this, you could see the keyframes. This happened 16 frames. Let me drag it and say the producer wanted it to be eight frames. And now you have this quick move on her. And if I wanted to drag it back, right, I'm holding alt and I'm dragging the keyframe right there. If I wanted to add a keyframe for some reason in this spot and have it zoom in, I don't know why I would do that, but let's say you did and then it comes back out something like that. I'm going to delete that. So the only other thing I'll mention quick today about these keyframes is now if I hold these two right here, and if I open this triangle right here, uh, you can change these keyframes from where they, where, they're, where the default in Avid is linear. We'll, we'll look right here from size zero to size 162 in the Z position, right? So it's going linear. But if I right click and I hold this Bezier, then I get this little handle right here in which case I can affect the speed, make it more of like a little bump, more of a bounce, um, which is good for animation. Uh, animation should really not be linear. Animation, uh, in the, in the good animation, especially in After Effects, you want to be able to adjust the speed value. It shouldn't be in a straight line. Balls and, and, and things like that don't necessarily move like that. So this one, it bounces in and it comes back. Now, the problem with Bezier and a problem with this in Avid is this tool is really hard to look at, really hard to represent. Uh, I can, uh, even here, I can't even see it sometimes. Um, can, you, this ball is just so small, it's very hard to write. Even this key, there's a number here that I can't even read, right? So something to think about there, and I'm going to go back to make this linear. And now it will go back to the way it was, right? It's just a straight line. And like I said, if I alt drag it here, ooh, and now be careful here, I have two keyframes here. That was a good mistake to have happen. I have a keyframe at the end and a keyframe before that. And so I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to alt drag this keyframe here. So imagine some sort of sound effect. That's kind of a funny thing for maybe a reality type show, a move in on a, on a, on a woman or something like that. Um, the only other thing I'd say here is you can save this effect into a bin. Let me bring a bin over here. And, and you just drag this into a bin and you can name it what you want. Like I said, maybe push in eight frames. And what's cool about this is that now I can save this forever. So in this case, what happened here was, look at this. I have this clip 
and it goes back to the two. It, it, what it, what it was is it's a full speed clip that goes to a slow mo. Say it's the end right before a commercial or a tease or something. But I wanted to go over the whole thing, so what I'm going to do is go to V2. I'm going to hit Add Edit on both sides, and I'm going to drag that 3D warp clip onto V2. Let me get rid of the one I have on V1. Right, it's an adjustment layer, and I just made the parameters for it. And now, when it pushes in, it will stay there with the freeze frame. Right? You see, hopefully, you, you saw that difference. You can just put it as adjustment layer, rather than oh my god, what a pain in the neck that would be to do it here and then put another 3D warp here and copy and paste the, the keyframes and things like that. Doing that would take away some valuable free time to drink beer. I'm going to talk about a beer this week from the Bronx Brewery called Now Jews Can't Leave. The alcohol level is 10.1%, which I haven't had one that strong, and I can't remember when. I started to drink it because I'm trying to lose weight, so maybe less beer, more alcohol. The more alcohol I have, the less beer I would drink. Um, so that's why I started drinking this one. So it was a delicious beer, but my kids also said that that was the top 10 drunk they've ever seen me. So... With that, thanks so much for watching. I'll do a 3D Warp Part 2 and go over some other things, cool issues with 3D Warp. I hope I know that was simple. I hope that was helpful to some people. And if you're looking to learn the Avid Media Composer software, go to avidbeer.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.